Thank you so much for the introduction. Yeah, it's exactly what Susan said. You know, we are coming out of 20 years of um, Facebook, Google dominating uh, communication channels and uh, content, and there's a lack of um, oversight and making sure that uh, uh, can we trust these kind of sources of information. And I want to walk you through something. It sounds a little bit technical, I would say. <laughs> But um, I want to use some animation to walk you through something that I believe is the next wave of um, internet that we've been through 20 years ago. And uh, it's called blockchain. And uh, I would say it's the new technology of trust because it will change how we interact between each other, how we transact, because it's uh, leveraging the open internet. It's leveraging cryptographic functionality and we will see a lot of things will get faster, more secure, especially it comes to key information and also to establish a new way of uh, trust. So something that for tw uh, 20 years ago, we swing more to a central model, we will see we'll swing to a totally different model. And uh, let me explain that in a, in a small animation that um, I think we are uh, at the beginning of a major change. If you look at um, the way today, we, how we um, interact is, um, we transfer over the internet um, information by duplication. We always copy music, uh, um, PDFs, PowerPoint, whatever, if you want to exchange this between uh, two parties. So there's a lot of uh, duplication, and there's, in most of the cases, somebody that verifies that this uh, is being processed in the right way, and that, is, that generates a lot of complexity, complexity that all the parties have to reconcile their positions, they have to maintain their own books, I would say, and they have to be always in, uh, in sync. And that's something, especially in the financial service industry, if you look, if you buy and sell trades uh, or stocks, it takes a few days, there are a lot of parties involved, and um, it takes time, and it's intransparent. And then now with the blockchain, uh, what's the desire is that um, we're moving now in a world that physical assets can be transferred. That means we don't want to uh, have a duplication of assets, whatever is out there. We don't want to use a third party. Uh, it's almost like a self-regulated way to uh, exchange, doing a deal, doing a transaction, exchanging information. And so, so the blockchain technology at the end is um, it's something uh, between two parties now. It's very direct peer-to-peer. Uh, the information that you store on the open internet cannot be uh, changed. It's immutable um, and is happening without a third party. So it eliminates potentially maybe a Facebook, a Uber, um, playing houses, other third parties that usually between uh, two parties are involved. Because the the, 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 the key point, if you look, what is a blockchain? Um, I think you can describe this in four topics. One is everything is digital. There's no paperwork anymore. Um, everything will be stored in a way. And the difference is that the network, that mean you and I and, and other parties will verify in an automatic way those transactions by consensus. So it's a, it's a very decentralized way. And I will have an example in a minute about the media industry that um, yeah, the community at the end will make sure that those news are the right ones and also fat, um, uh, fast checks, etc. And it's secure, so you cannot add, move, change this information. If it's out there, it's verified, it's, it's, uh, it's secured through cryptographic uh, functionality. So it's a completely different way how we interact going forward. And it means, um, um, uh, but what's the difference is at the end, the middleman uh, it can be a buyer and a seller. It can be an eBay that will disappear. Uh, there will be um, a direct relationship between an investor and a company, somebody want to invest. And that's for me uh, the real example right now in the industry because um, um, uh, the venture capital industry is getting diminished by this because there's a new technology out there with the blockchain that uh, companies can sell their virtual stocks through the blockchain technology, and it's getting more funding right now than called initial coin offerings than the venture capital industry. So venture capital, you see, as a middle person, is already in, uh, under pressure. Uh, that same also between reader and producer, uh, the middleman, 
uh, exchanging this information will disappear. And this is a serious business because they are, it's very comparable with what happened 20 years ago. We're talking about 2,000 uh, startups working in all industries, financial service industry, media, um, logistic, healthcare, building up these new solutions. And if you look at how much money already is invested, very similar then to the internet startup companies 20 years ago, 500 million per year. But that number, that was the last year, was 700 million invested in blockchain startup. This year will be over 3 billion. Because with the technology, there is now access to capital uh, that was not in place before. So we we'll see a democratization of access to capital that usually we saw bottlenecks to private equity firms and venture capital firms will be free up. So there's something that um, I want to put you on the, or put this on the radar screen of you because this has an impact on geography, on region, on business development. Let me walk you through one example. I'm not talking about financial service industry because the financial services banking is the fast mover. I would say very close to that is the media industry. And, and Susan mentioned that you know, we run into an issue, there's some content being produced out there and nobody can verify is it, is it, is it real, is it, is it fake, et cetera. So there's a company out there and there are many, many other uh, decentralized um, startups out there that are putting now news networks out there called decentralized news networks. That is a platform for a producer, writers, uh, reviewers, and readers. That means uh, the, the producer provides content. There is a community of um, fast check uh, reviewer. And, and the, the community is then also, they get paid for that, uh, provides based on guidelines, is this information correct, and uh, provides this information to then to the community. And there's an incentive for that because everybody gets a full certain cryptocurrency gets paid for that. So there is a way also to um, increase the adoption for that. So there's collaboration that's decentralized and there's a factual way also to put information out there. So something that's really fascinating to watch, I think the adoption of those kind of technology will be faster than I would say a Facebook. It took them over three years to get to 50 million. I think this will be faster because there is a monetary effect that the user get instead of uh, a company like Facebook through commercials. And this can be applied for all, in, all industry like financial services, logistics, healthcare, um, and other industry. At the end, we're talking about um, significant benefits from perspective, exactly. We're talking about simplification. We're talking about simple uh, speed, transparency from point of view. So the technology itself at the end it's a new technology of trust that uh, the community will enable, and there is a momentum uh, across the region that I think is unstoppable. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, I must say, I still feel a chill. Um, I suspect the tax man also feels a chill, because if there's no record, then there's no tax. There is a record because everything will be a record on the internet. So the traceability of those transactions is even higher from an AML anti-money laundering perspective, from, a, from that perspective. You see, um, um, and it's a global theme. It's not limited to certain countries, etc. It will be cross-border accessible. That's great. Thank you. I mean, what I'm hoping is when we get time to questions, I mean, people in the audience will, will have specific things to ask. Um, the whole idea of decentralized media um, fascinates me, partly because it seems to eliminate the whole idea of professionalism, of professional editors, of training, of craft. You know, if, if everything is a hobby, um, then who do you trust? So you, you, could, you could, professional editor could get incentivized to be part of the review yeah. network because they get paid through that. Yes. So that's a different role well, that the, the editor could play yeah. in the future. Well, as, as a former editor, I'd probably make more money with your blockchain Abs than I do. Absolutely, I would say, paper. because I think you have much <laughs> bigger access to information that can be verified. Anyway, thank you.